Hey, LifePoint family, thanks for joining us here on our YouTube channel. Before we dive into the message, Tammy and I wanna take a moment to share our excitement about an upcoming opportunity we engage in together every year as a church, and that's our year-end offering. That's right. In this season of generosity and reflection, we want to be intentional about expressing our gratitude to God while sowing a seed of faith into the future. And we do that through this annual offering that's over and above our regular giving. During this series overflow, we are dwelling on God's faithfulness, His goodness, and the impact your generosity has had, meeting people's needs and advancing the message of Jesus, not only in our communities, but around the world. However you share in this family, whether you attend in person or you're a part of our online community, we invite you to participate out of an overflow of gratitude for what God's done and what you're believing for in the year ahead. You know, Hebrews 12, 18 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and with awe. We want to personally invite you to prayerfully consider giving a one-time gift or even a recurring gift as a response of worship and also as an act of faith. You can go to lifepoint.org slash overflow to find out more. Whatever you decide to bring to this offering, know that we are eternally grateful right. to partner with you in advancing the mission. Yeah. Now more than ever, people need the hope, the message, and the person of Jesus. So every gift you sow is a seed of faith that honors God, and we celebrate it. We love you so much, and we can't wait to see what God does through you and through all that we get to accomplish together. Hey, we're in week two of this series called Overflow. If you're new to church, a series is simply a collection of talks around one common thought, one common theme, and that's what we're in. And the whole idea of this Overflow series is that, is that you and I, we started talking last week that we would be the overflow, um, that, that we would be the overflow of God's goodness and God's generosity and God's kindness, that it would flow through us, overflow out of us into the lives of of other people that, as that song said, that our cup would kind of be so full that when you bump us, that what would overflow out of us, people would experience Jesus. And, and so I want to I stay in that same idea this week and talk to you about this idea of sowing and reaping, of sowing and reaping. By a show of hands at every campus, everybody participate. How many of you remember in elementary school, whenever you'd get the little cup and you would plant a seed in it and you'd put it in the window at the school? Do I still do that? Come on, if they don't still do that, any school board members attend our church, let's get that back in the curriculum. It was very important. Actually made me want to get up and go to school the next day, which didn't happen often. Because I was like, is anything going to happen today? You know what I mean? And, and especially if you had the, white, the clear cup, right? If you had the clear cup, because then you could kind of see if the seed was... Y'all are looking at me funny. Y'all remember this? <laughs> Am I the only one? Is this illustration falling flat? All right, so you had the clear cup, you know. If you had the red solo cup, we lift you up. Let's throw a park. <laughs> All you heathens need to listen to better music. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but you could see the little seed sprouting and then the little, the little uh, you know, whatever thing. I didn't, I, obviously, I listened a lot in science. The little whatever would sprout up and then it would, you know, you could have a little bloom or something. And, and, and that, that was, it was just fun to watch. And you would get to school every morning and it was setting up at my school, Gravely Elementary in Kingsport, Tennessee. It was setting up in the, in the windowsill and you would come every day and look. All right, next day, and it, over time though, what would happen is that something would, would sprout up. You know what that taught me is that it's a great life lesson is that things take time. And that there is a process to things that you really want. Um, and, and especially in this idea of sowing and reaping, I want to show you this in Genesis chapter 8, the Bible says this. It's, it's a biblical idea. This is talking about obviously the natural, but it's also a very spiritual principle. It says, as long as the earth endures and the earth is enduring, um, you may not like the state of it right now, um, but it's enduring. It says this, there'll be seed time and harvest. Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Somebody say never cease. Never cease. Yeah, seed time and harvest. I, I think that we would all agree that not only is it seed time and then harvest, but it's seed time and then harvest. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Is that not the case? You, you, you've got to have, um, it, you, you get seed, right? You have to take this little seed. 
It's there, trust me. You gotta, there's real dirt, there's dirt in here. You gotta plant the seed. I'm no farmer. I don't even do plants at my house. Then you gotta water the seed. And you wait, and you wait, and you wait. Are you following me? It's just so true spiritually, because we live in a day where we want this immediately. We want to like, we want to throw the seed in, and poof, there it is. We got the harvest. We've got the plant. But it takes seed, time, come on with it. It takes seed, it takes time, and then we get a harvest. We, but we're like, but God, I, I, I went to church two weeks in a row, and I don't have, I don't have a harvest. But, but God, I, I prayed one time, like, why am I, st- Like, can I, can, I, can I speed this up? Can I manufacture a little quicker? Are y'all with me? We want this immediately, but it takes seed. It takes time. And then you get harvest. And here's the amazing thing about seed is that it's so little. It's so little. And a lot of us think that, that the sowing of the seed isn't doing a whole lot. But here's what I want you to get, is that all of this is inside this. If you're a note taker, write this down. Everything you need is inside of a seed. If you get this revelation in your walk with God, it'll change your life. That everything you need is inside this little seed. But a lot of us want this immediately, and we're praying for this, and we're asking God for this. God, give me the harvest. God, God, fix the marriage. God, do the thing. God, I need more joy. I need more encouragement. God, I need the financial breakthrough in my life. And we're begging for the harvest, and God is going, great, let me give you some seed. See, this is how it works in the kingdom of God. If you were to ask God for a chair, God would give you a tree. Because the chair is inside the tree. But, but with our eyes, we don't often see it. We're like, no, God, I asked you for a chair. And, and we're like, God isn't meeting my need. God isn't providing. God doesn't hear my prayer. I went to church a month in a row. I went to 21 days of prayer and fasting, and God didn't do it. No, no, no. God may have given you a seed when you were looking for a plant. And God goes, I want to produce the plant in you. But the way I produce the plant in you is that I first give you a seed. And if you'll get the seed... If you'll get the seed in the ground and plant it. But God, when I plant the seed, that takes time. And I don't like time. I don't like to have to wait. I want microwave Jesus. I want fast food Jesus. Are y'all with me? I want, say it today, get it tomorrow, Jesus. And he's like, no, 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 there's seed, there's time, and then there's harvest. But most of us, we don't see the power of the seed or we overlook the seed. See, if if you were to sow encouragement, then maybe when you need encouragement, the harvest would be there for you. That maybe what God's trying to get us to see is that When my body needs healing, maybe I need to pray healing over somebody else. That if I would sow that prayer, then maybe I would reap what I need. Are y'all with me? I'm telling you this revelation will change your life if you'll get it. But what a lot of us do is God gives us the seed and we're like, I got to hang on to my seed. I want to be able to pass this seed down to my next generation. And the seed does you no good in your hand. Think about it. This seed produces nothing right here. 
Like, it'll... I could even hold the seed in my hand and water it. That went down my sleeve. (laughs) What I do for you people to help you. It'll never produce a harvest. I could dump a bunch of seeds in my hand. I could water them a little less this time. (laughs) I could walk around for days like this and I'll never get a harvest until it leaves my hand. But so many of us, this is what happens when you live with a lack mentality. And I'm not teaching you prosperity gospel if you even know what that is. I'm, I'm teaching you, I'm not teaching you like, give God a dollar and he'll throw you a Mercedes back. It don't, it don't work, I tested it. Just, just in case, just in case, it was real. Because <laughs> I like those cars. I'm teaching you a blessing mentality. I'm teaching you that we serve a God of more than enough, of over and above, a God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the hills that they set on. I'm teaching you we serve the God that is well able to do exceedingly abundantly and above anything you can ask or imagine. But if you live with a lack mentality, you'll just want to hold on to this seed. Well, I just got to keep the seed. And whenever I get some seed, I got to keep the seed. But if I keep the seed, the seed can never produce the harvest that God wants to give me when I keep it in my hand. But it takes faith to get it out of my hand and plant it in the ground. That is where faith comes in. Are you with me? It takes faith to go. Why? Because when I got it in my hand, I have something tangible. When I put it in the ground, it is no longer now my hand's empty. But what I'm saying is I'm saying, God, I trust you that if I'll empty my hand, you can fill my hand with more than what was originally in my hand. Are y'all with me today? There's so much potential in the seed. Everything you need is right here inside the seed. And God has given you seeds. They're already in your hand. You need a harvest of encouragement? Go sow some encouragement. You need a harvest financially? Then go sow financially. You need someone to pray for you, go pray for somebody else. It's the way the kingdom of God works. Everything you need is right here. I'm telling you, you get this revelation, it'll change your life. Everything you need is right here inside of this seed, and the seed is already in your hand. It's already in your capacity. It's already in your ability. But we minimize the seed because it's like, what can this little thing do? That. It can produce that. But it can't produce it in your hand. So here's what I'm trying to convince you today is to become a sower. Trying to convince you to, unashamedly, I'm trying to convince you to become a sower. If you're with me, say amen. I want to show you three things that sowers know and sowers do. If you're a note taker, you're going to write this down. If you're not, you're going to want to write this down. If you're with me, shout amen. Amen. There we go. All right. Number one is this. Sowers do this. Sowers sow every day. Sowers sow every day. Ecclesiastes says this. It says, sow your seed in the morning and at evening. Let your hands not become idle. For you don't know which will succeed. You don't know which will take this or that or whether both will equally do as well. You don't know which one is going to take. You don't know when it's going to hit the ground, right? So just sow every day. Sow every morning, sow every evening. You don't know if the one in the morning is going to take, the one in the evening is going to take, or if both are going to take, but just sow every day. Sowers sow every day. Here's the the thought I want you to get, is that you can't prepare for an opportunity when the opportunity comes. You have to have prepared for it before. 
No, no professional athlete gets called to the combine for the NFL. No NFL athlete gets called to the combine and is like, oh, I better get ready. I need to learn to run a 40. I need to learn how to throw the ball. Are y'all with me? No, they've been preparing their whole life for when the opportunity would possibly come. Are you following me? This is what sowers understand. I don't know when I'm gonna need a harvest. I don't know what day I'm gonna need a harvest, but I know at some point in my life, I'm gonna need harvest. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get up and sow every day. Every day I live, I'm gonna sow. I'm gonna sow an encouraging word. I'm gonna sow a prayer into somebody's life. I'm gonna sow some mercy into some. I'm gonna sow forgiveness. I'm gonna sow kindness. I'm gonna so empathy. Why? Because there's going to come a day that I'm going to need that in my life. And so I'm just going to sow every single day. Are you with me? Sow or sow every day. And you know what sowing every day does? It kills entitlement in your life. It'll choke out entitlement in your life. Because when you get up every day going, how can I Bless, how can I sow into somebody else's life? You don't get up going, well, what are they gonna do for me? What can I get out of this day? No, 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 I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna switch my mentality. We're gonna say, how can I sow today? How can I bless somebody today? Who at my office could I sow into today in some way? An encouraging word, an uplifting thought, a prayer, who could I bring a coffee to just to say I was thinking about you? It doesn't take a whole lot to sow, but sowers think about sowing every day, and it gets your mindset off of you and gets your mindset onto others, what you can do for others. Sowers sow every day. It chokes out entitlement, and it creates an automatic harvest because in the kingdom of God, you can't sow without reaping. And you don't know when you'll reap, and you don't know how you'll need to reap, but if you're sowing every day, guess what happens? There's always a harvest. There's always a harvest. Right. Sowers, I'm trying to get you to become a sower today. Sowers sow every day. Sowers sow every day. Are you with me? Shout amen. amen. I want you to sow every day. Number two is that sowers sow willingly. They don't get up and go, oh, I gotta sew today. <laughs> I hate this, I hate being nice to people. No, no, they, they, they sew willing. Generous people, they don't, they don't get up and be like, oh, I gotta be generous today. No, it's willingly, it's actually what God wants from you. Second Corinthians nine says this, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. That's just, a, that's just logic. Are you with me? Like, if I, if I only put, if I only throw one seed, I shouldn't expect a planter full of plants, right? If I, but if I sow generously, I should expect a generous return. Are you with me? That's what the Bible says. I sow sparingly, I'll reap sparingly. So don't, like, don't be shocked when it's like, well, God, what are you doing? God's like, you didn't sow a lot. <laughs> You're not getting a whole lot. Those who sow generously will also reap generously. Each one of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give. Paul here is writing in the context of, of financial giving. I think it applies to all areas of your life where you sow. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a, a cheerful giver. Like I sometimes, I sometimes think God would almost be like, if you're going to give it with attitude, just keep it. I think God's like, I'm good. Like, you don't have anything he needs. So maybe giving is something that you need. Maybe sowing is something that you need. But he says, no, no I don't want you, to, this is why we tell you about year-end giving like five weeks out, because I don't want you to be like, you know, this, this some emotional twist your arm moment. And, and no, you, you should, you should pre-decide in your heart and then should come like, like I think offering, should, offering time should be like, oh, I can't wait. Like, I don't have to give, I get to give. Are you kidding me? I get to sow. This is amazing. I think that's the way. He goes on to say, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work 
As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. I love that visual. They freely scatter their gifts. How would it change the communities around us if the thousands of us that call LifePoint home went into our days going, I'm just going to freely scatter generosity, compassion, love, I'm just going to freely scatter it because I'm, I'm just doing it willingly. Like, how, how, would it cha- how would it change the world around? How would it change your home, your neighborhood, your workplace, your school? If you were to determine, I'm going to be the person, no matter what everybody else, well, Pastor, they don't deserve, they don't deserve me to sow into their life. They're just going to have a bad attitude again tomorrow if I come up and I'm kind to them. Your responsibility is not what they do with what you sow. Your responsibility is to be a sower. You let God take care of the consequences of that. Your job is to be a sower. How would it change if you just, I'm just going to freely scatter it. I'm going to, I know this is radical. I'm going to scatter it on people that I agree with and that I don't agree with. I'm gonna freely scatter on Democrats and Republicans and independents. I know this is like radical Jesus stuff. I'm gonna scatter it on cowboy fans and Washington fans, like both. I mean, they both need help, so just give them (laughs) some help. I love that idea. You know why we don't freely scatter? And God's able? Because we don't really believe that if we empty this out, God can fill it back up. That's why we don't freely scatter. I mean, honestly, that's why we don't freely scatter. Because we're like getting low. And if I give this to everybody, if I empty this thing out, if I come to year in giving with a sacrificial offering, I don't know that God can replace that in my savings. I feel like if if I really give out, if I just love and love and love, and I don't know if God can replenish that. But the Bible says that God is able. That God is able. Let me, (laughs) if he can get back up from the dead, uh, you ain't got no problem filling back your little seed packet. <laughs> Are you following me? Come on, put your hands together if you believe that. Number three, last thought. It's this. Write this down. Sowers receive more seed. I want you to, I want you to get sowers receive more seed. Here's what I need you to see. This isn't about the more, it's about the sower. I wanna show it to you in the scripture. Now he who supplies seed to the sower, who gets more seed? Sowers, you gotta get this. This is so good, you've gotta get this. He gives seed to sowers not keepers. I'm gonna sow as soon as God puts more in my packet. Those people don't get more seed. You're kinda, you make it sound like God has some favorites. God doesn't have favorites, but God has principles. He doesn't have preferences, but he has principles and he doesn't break his principles. And one of his principles is, you want more seed? You gotta sow the seed you have. Well, as soon as I get more, I'll sow more. Doesn't work that way in the kingdom. Matter of fact, I just kind of practically believe that if you won't sow from one packet, you wouldn't sow if God gave you five. Yeah, I'm just practically like, He gives seed to sowers. So if you want more seed, be a sower. 
Be a sower in every area of your life. Just determine I'm gonna freely scatter seed. But, but it's getting low. <laughs> what, if, what if God doesn't refill it? Well, he, he's already promised. He gives seed to the sower. He gives bread for food. And watch this. He'll also supply and he'll do what? Somebody shall increase. He'll increase your store of seed. In other words, he's like, I, I can fill this packet back up, y'all. I got it. And he'll enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. So not only he'll give you more seed, he'll give you more harvest. And you'll be enriched in every way so that you can sit fat and happy. No. He only gives you more so you can harvest more, so you can be more generous on every occasion. And he goes on to say, and through us, your generosity will result in what? Thanksgiving to God. This whole thing isn't, can I get a, can I get blessed and get a big house? I don't know, God may give it to you, it's cool. I hope he does. But the ultimate end isn't what you can get, it's what you can give because in your giving, God gets glory. And that's the ultimate end. It results in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, so it's not only making a difference, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Sowers get more seed. You know why? You gotta get this. They get more seed because God knows they'll sow more. Because sowers sow every day and they sow willingly and they get more seed. Why? Because they sow every day and they sow willingly and so they get more seed. And why does God give them more seed? Because these crazy people sow every day and God's like, good Lord, they keep sowing. I've got to give them more seed so they can keep sowing. And what's happening? It's, it's producing a harvest that is giving thanks to God and impacting the lives of so many people. Oh, I want you to be a sower. I want you to be a sower. Side note, sowers have more fun. It's point four not on the screen for you. <laughs> you know why? Because God wired you physiologically to receive enjoyment from sowing. You know it. That's why when you give a birthday gift, you're like, <laughs> go ahead, open it. <laughs> why? Because it's fun to sow. I mean, didn't the Bible say it's more blessed to give than it is to, it's more fun to sow. And so I wanna help you be a sower. And so at every campus, I'm gonna ask our ushers right now, if they would, they're gonna give everybody in every room an envelope. Now listen to me, pay attention to me while they're handing this out to you. Take one, they're gonna do it as quickly as possible. In every envelope, there is either $5, $10, or $100. It's kind of a reverse offering today. And here's what you're gonna do with that. You're not gonna keep it for yourself. If you do, God will strike you dead. <laughs> I'm joking, I don't know, I'm just kidding. Total joke, I don't know that he will. You're gonna go find somebody, and you probably won't have to look very far, that has a need and you're gonna go so into their life. And here's my challenge to you. Maybe you would add to make it a bigger seed than what is in your envelope. Maybe you're gonna to go to lunch today and maybe you get one of the big amounts and you're gonna add that as the tip. You're just gonna let them know there's a little card in there that said just because just God loves you. Just let people know God loves them, it's real easy. I just wanna help kickstart your sewing career. Maybe your small group would pull your seed together and you guys know of somebody that's in need. 
Just become a sower. Become a sower. What would happen? I asked the question earlier, if all of us left and we determined to freely scatter seed, well, I think we're gonna find out as we generously sow. Everybody take one. Now, here's what you're not gonna do. You're not gonna keep it for yourself and you're not gonna put it in the offering bucket as you leave today. (laughs) Doesn't count. You will not get credit in heaven if you do. You're gonna take this and you're gonna go sow into the life of somebody else and let them know that God loves them, God sees them, And I hope it gets you in the habit of just sowing every day, sowing willfully, and you'll find out that just when you thought it was empty, God filled it back up so that I can sow every day and sow willfully. And just when I thought it was empty, God has a way of filling it back up so that you can do what? You can sow every day and you can sow willingly. Has everybody got one? We got it out to everybody, ushers. Awesome, let's pray together. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Sticking with this metaphor, the greatest seed that it was ever put in the ground was the body of Jesus. Three days later, he rose again, producing a harvest for us that would result in eternal life. He was the greatest sower. And because of his death and because of his life, you and I get eternal life. We get forgiveness of sin. We get peace with God. What a gift. That is the gospel. It's the good news that Jesus died, he was buried, and that he rose again three days later that you and I might have life. And if today you've never received that gift, I wanna invite you to do that. I'm not asking you to join this church, it's not about that, it's do you know Jesus? Have you encountered him? Has your life been forever changed? Do you know that you know that you have peace with God? If you don't, in a moment, we're gonna pray together and there's nothing magical or special in the prayer, it's just me helping you communicate by faith to God that you want peace with him, that you wanna know that your sins are forgiven. And if that's you today, I'm not gonna embarrass you. No one would come to you. I promise you that. I just wanna know who we're praying with at every campus. If that's you, I'm gonna count to three when I do. Just want you to shoot your hand up long enough for me to see it. And then we're gonna pray together as a church. If you say, Pastor, that's me. I feel far from God today. I need a new start. I need a brand new beginning today. I wanna know that I have peace with God. Then you can, you can right now. If that's you on three, this is your day. No one looking around, you shoot your hand up. One, two, three, you just shoot it up. God bless you, I see you, I see you, I see you. All over the room, you can put them down. Church, let's pray out loud together for the benefit of those who just slipped up their hand. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I believe you died for me. I believe God raised you from the dead. Today I make you my Lord and Savior. Thank you for a brand new beginning. In Jesus' name, everybody said a big amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate those who made that decision. Hey, we hope today's message spoke to your situation and was helpful to your life. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're posting new content every week. And also, if you'd like to partner with us financially, you can click the link below. You know, it's thanks to the generosity of people like you that we're able to meet the needs of people all over the world. So thank you for making a difference and helping deliver this message to the people that need it most. And thanks for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you soon.